Just recently, I watched a beautiful video from the TED Talk series where the artist Domingo Zapata said about the first drawings humans made. At a time where we couldn't really speak or write, we were already expressing who we are and where we're going, just with images. That is, for me, the beginning of humanity. And something clicked because as someone who has just recently learned that I actually do struggle to meet the expectations of modern life, and I believe all of us do to some extent, time and time again, I have been in situations with my art where I was judged for how I made, if it would be successful, if it met external standards well enough, if it was marketable enough to fit neatly within the confines of a system that only values me for what I produce and how much capital I can make. But that, to me, has never been the point of my art. The point of my creations has been to process what I have been going through, who I am, and where I want to go. And sometimes, it has been what kept me going. For 30 years of my life, I have found myself sewing. Because there was something about that process, the continuing, the understanding of what I could hold in my hands, or maybe nothing that could really be spoken, that healed me as I worked. As a child, I imagined escaping by becoming another person in another time, sometimes in another form of reality altogether. As an adolescent, I sewed to ground me to the play I was slowly losing as my friends gave up dress up for boy bands and social structures. As a young adult, I sewed as a way to prove myself, to succeed in ways that others told me would make me happy. And as a parent, I sew to process the difficulties of patriarchy, ableism, loss, and grief. This has always made sense to me, to process through making. But along with that, there has always been the external elements witnessing my creations sometimes more present than others. Sometimes I felt pressured into making my art digestible, acceptable, worthy only if it made me money somehow, or content that pleased people enough to like and follow me. And with that, I've often felt overwhelmed and closed in. I've felt weighed down, ashamed that I couldn't somehow just fall into this expectation and make it work. Sometimes this pressure resulted in me losing an opportunity. Either a supervisor concluded my stress from being undiagnosed ADHD within too many constraints that I had no power over was me being undeserving of the work I was given. Sometimes I would lose the project altogether, and sometimes I wouldn't even try. Sometimes they would see it as disrespectful or a threat because they also were forced to comply. We aren't supposed to show that. We're supposed to keep going. Just keep going. I need to survive. I need a paycheck. I need to hold it together. You need to hold it together. You're making us look bad. Suck it up and deal. Sometimes I would set unrealistic standards for myself because I had never learned how to accommodate my own needs. As many of us late diagnosed autistics and ADHDers, children of the 80s and 90s raised by generations that didn't talk about things. Many of us latchkey kids who were never really given the attention or the concept that our needs mattered or could even be asked for. I think there is a deep grief we are all processing in some way over how things didn't need to be like this. We could have found a way to work on our own terms, to create in ways that satisfied and fed us, to just know that it was even a possibility. Not even in the workforce or school, but in our own relationships, our families, our friendships, and our own bodies. The need to create art is a wild and beautiful thing when it speaks directly from what we feel, not if that is acceptable or not. When it gives us the power to speak regardless of what comes out, or when the creation itself speaks of things that have no words, but simply are. I have been feeling so drained lately when I start to make a project, when I think of posting about it, when I think about making videos, and I think it drains me because it brings up the very things that tie all of us down to hierarchies and standards and hustle culture and expectations that are not truly what we need to process. They keep us from experiencing our grief, our joy, our actual honest truth. It keeps us from seeing why things are built the way they are and how that impacts everyone in the hierarchy especially those who deal with racism, ableism, and sexism. 
Hustle keeps us blind to the rest we need, and the rest that marginalized people often do not even have the time to even think about. In the words of Trisha Hersey, author of Rest is Resistance and founder of the NAP Ministry, loving ourselves and each other deepens our disruption of the dominant systems. They want us unwell, fearful, exhausted, and without deep self-love because you are easier to manipulate when you are distracted by what is not real or true. In this book, Patricia Hersey names what most self-help books of our time haven't, that American capitalism's roots reside in chattel slavery and how this normalized the exploitation of the human body for profit. A concept that has been internalized now into how we all view ourselves and the fear of being lazy, while at the same time constantly being pushed and burnt out even in our hobbies and self-care. I realized how much this not enough, keep going, you should be able to keep going, prove yourself, establish yourself culture, has impacted my feelings that I could not rest, even after burning out from nonstop sensory overload, constantly overloading in the workforce, and parenting in a disabled body that never knew how or was even allowed to function as it needed to. Not only had I been trying to prove myself as a neurotypical person in all aspects of my life when I wasn't even neurotypical, but I then turned every hobby or special interest or my own healing into something where I once again had to prove myself or else I would feel guilty or inadequate. The inability to heal through rest is violent. To never be good enough is abusive. Rest is a human right, which must be taken. It challenges the oppressive systems. It is an essential part of social and disability justice. It is a visceral feeling now, an itching tension in my neck that I can only put down when I truly tell myself to give up. But only on that, that which is not this. Put it down. And then pick up the sewing needle, pick up the pen, pick up the paintbrush, pick up myself. Remember I am here. Breathe. Go outside. Slow down. Your art is about you. It is about right now. It is about any right now. It is needed more than ever. Like air, like water. Now is the time we give ourselves permission to make the art we actually need. The ones we make in secret, with no plans. The kind that is falling back into ease. The kind that falls out, the kind that is messy and whole and liberated, mysterious, explains nothing about itself. You, my neurodivergent maker, you can make on your own terms, regardless, unapologetic. Art is for healing. May we give ourselves the permission to do that.